We're going to start the probability section of the course next class, so this video is primarily to give you some basic terminology regarding probability that we're going to be using over the next several weeks. To start out, a random experiment is defined to be any process, real or hypothetical, that leads to one of several potential outcomes that can be defined ahead of time. One of the most common examples of a random experiment is rolling a single fair die. You have one die, you roll the die, it has six sides, the sides are numbered from one through six. This is an example of a random experiment. You don't know what number you're going to roll ahead of time. The number that comes up is essentially random. An outcome is defined to be a potential result of a random experiment. So if we go back to our random experiment where we're rolling a single fair die, one possible outcome here is rolling a 4. Rolling a 4 is one possible result of running your random experiment of rolling a single fair die. Next, the sample space is defined to be the set of all possible outcomes of a random experiment. So it's basically a list of all the possible results that you can get when you run a random experiment. The sample space is usually written in set notation. It's generally contained inside a set of braces or inside a set of parentheses. The way you write out the sample space really depends on the situation that you're working with. And we'll talk about how you do this uh, in a lot greater detail over the next several weeks. The sample space is also generally denoted by the capital letter S. So taking a look at the example that we've been working with, we have our random experiment rolling a single fair die. We have our outcome rolling the number four. In this case, rolling a single fair die, your sample space consists of the integers one through six. The only possible numbers that you can roll on a single fair die are one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we take those integers, we put them inside a set of braces, and we call this our sample space, and we denote it by the letter S. There are two requirements that sample spaces must follow. Sample spaces must be both exhaustive and the outcomes must be mutually exclusive. Here's what we mean by these two terms. Exhaustive means that the sample space must include all possible outcomes of the random experiment. Mutually exclusive means that no two outcomes can occur at the same time. So going back to our example, rolling a single fair die, we have our sample space, the integers 1 through 6. We can show why this sample space is exhaustive and mutually exclusive. It's exhaustive because all of the integers from 1 through 6 are included. If we had left out, for example, the number 3, we would have written our sample space as 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. But 3 is a possible outcome for rolling a fair die. It's possible to roll a 3 on a single fair die. So if we leave out the number 3, our sample space is not exhaustive. We need to make sure that we include every single possible outcome of the random experiment. This sample space is also mutually exclusive because we can't roll two different numbers simultaneously. It's impossible to roll both a 1 and a 4 on the same die. You can't get two outcomes, two different numbers, by rolling this die a single time you can only get one possible outcome. So this is what we mean by mutually exclusive. Only one outcome can occur at once. The next term we need to define is an event. An event is a collection of one or more outcomes from a sample space. Events are generally denoted either by capital letters or by words or short phrases that summarize the event. For our example of rolling a fair die, we have our sample space, which consists of the integers from 1 through 6. An event might be rolling an even number. Rolling an even number consists of the outcomes 2, 4, and 6. 2, 4, and 6 is a collection or a subset of your sample space, and combining those outcomes into 1 creates an event. Now that we've defined all of these other terms, we can finally define what a probability is. The probability is the chance that an event occurs. Probabilities are denoted by using the capital letter P, 
followed by a set of parentheses with the event that we desire inside. So if A is the event that we've defined, P of A is the probability that event A will occur. Taking a look at our example of rolling a fair die, where we've defined our event as being rolling an even number, we can summarize the event by just writing the word even inside the set of parentheses. That tells everyone who's looking at the problem, we're looking for the probability that we roll an even number on a single roll of a fair die. Probabilities have to satisfy two requirements. Let's let S be the sample space for our random experiment, and let's let A1, A2, up through AK denote the possible outcomes for this random experiment. Then the probabilities assigned to each outcome have to satisfy the following two properties. First, the probability of any outcome has to be between 0 and 1, meaning the probability of an event can never be negative, and the probability of an event can never be greater than 1. Second, if you take the probabilities for each outcome and you add up all of those probabilities together, the sum of all of the probabilities for all outcomes has to be equal to 1. Let's check to make sure that the requirements hold for our example of rolling a single fair die. The sample space for our experiment consists of the integers from 1 through 6. Since this die is fair, each outcome is equally likely. What this means is that no number is more likely to come up than any other number. As a result, we assign a probability of 1 sixth to each outcome or each number in the sample space. To check the first requirement, which is that the probabilities all lie between 0 and 1, we realize that we're assigning a probability of 1 sixth to the number 1. We're assigning a probability of 1 6th to the number 2, assign a probability of 1 6th to the numbers 3, 4, 5, and 6. And so since each of our probabilities is equal to 1 6th, what this means is that each outcome has a probability assigned to it that lies somewhere between 0 and 1. So the first requirement of probabilities holds. Second, we need to make sure that the sum of our probabilities is equal to 1. The way we do this is we take each possible outcome, we look at the probability that we assign to each outcome, and we add them together. We have six different outcomes, so our sum is going to consist of the probability of rolling a 1, plus the probability of rolling a 2, plus the probability of rolling a 3, a 4, a 5, and a 6. We'll take each of these individual probabilities, add them together, and see what happens. Since we assigned a probability of 1 6th to each outcome, really all we're doing is we're adding 1 6th together 6 different times. So a 6th plus 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 a 6th gives you a sum of 1. So the second requirement of probabilities also holds for this example. At this point, I want to give you a very general strategy for solving probability problems. This is a good place to start, but it's not going to work for every single type of problem we're going to look at. There will be different strategies that will come into play over the next several weeks. But again, like I said, this is a good place to start. The first thing that you should do is identify the sample space and the event that you're looking for. Second, you want to determine which outcomes make up the event. Third, calculate the probability of each outcome. And fourth, sum the probabilities for the outcomes to get your overall probability for that event. Let's finish things off by actually calculating the probability of the event that we defined earlier. We're looking for the probability of rolling an even number. First step, identify the sample space. We've done this extensively throughout this video. The sample space consists of the integers from 1 through 6. Also, we need to write out the event the event is rolling an even number. Second, we need to identify the outcomes in the event. Even numbers that are in the sample space are the integers 2, 4, and 6. Those are the only possible outcomes that satisfy the event. 
third, we need to identify the probabilities of the outcomes. The probability of rolling a 2 is 1 sixth, the probability of rolling a 4 is 1 sixth, and the probability of rolling a 6 is also 1 sixth. And again, this comes from the fact that we're rolling a fair die, and when you roll a fair die, each outcome has the same probability as every other outcome. And then finally, what we do is we sum the probabilities. The probability of rolling an even number equals the probability of rolling a 2, plus the probability of rolling a 4, plus the probability of rolling a 6. Adding each of these three probabilities together, 1 sixth plus 1 sixth plus 1 sixth, gives you a total of 3 sixths, or 1 half.